days talking with Jesus in the bathroom. You guys are really funny. I loved your comments. Like, what? You take showers with Jesus and Archangel Michael? Like, what's going on? Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm gonna sit down for this one, but don't worry. I'm like, I have my pants on, so don't think that I'm just like talking to you well. No, this is just like my private space where people that I live with can't hear me. So in a video that I made yesterday that I didn't release because I don't think I need to overwhelm you guys with a bunch of dance videos, but um, there was a song that came on and I just went and I hit the, the stereo on to connect my Bluetooth, but my Bluetooth wasn't even on and this song just came like blaring out and me and my daughter were trying to figure out where the song was coming from and we couldn't figure it out and it wasn't any of our phones. But I um, asked Google, you know, what the song was and I felt that it had a message, which it did. Um, and I was like, who was it that was playing that song, right? And then I was listening to hip hop today while I was getting ready. And all of a sudden Archangel Michael comes over to change the music and put this freaking that like I don't sit here and listen to meditation music, okay? But I guess. clearly he was sick of listening to hip hop or something. I don't know. But it's just what happened, okay? Um and all of you guys that think I'm crazy, you can just walk off now. <laughs> Alright, so what's been coming up in my conversations with Jesus um today have been about like having muses and um the difference between connecting to like the higher realms um and the angelic realms and um fantasy or like when we're like um you know wishing and hoping something that because when you're wishing and hoping you're like sending energy out but like you're not connecting it to anywhere. So it feels like this longing or lack feeling within you. Um, when you're connecting to the higher realms, it's like you walk through this portal and so you walk through this portal and then everything becomes lighter and you're not taking your thoughts with you. Like, okay, for instance, um, connecting with the garden, right? So, I mean that we do this often during meditation uh but when i'm having it facilitated for me and i walk into the garden space or even when i'm listening to my meditations back um yeah like i'm not projecting what i think it's gonna look like i'm allowing for myself to like tap into the frequency of the garden and then allowing the garden to show me what's there or and often like actually pretty much the majority of the time when I'm recording meditations and I'm taking you through it, I'm walking you through what I'm seeing. So I, it's not very often that I have anything written or I know where I'm going to take. It's just like I'm receiving a frequency and I know that I need to share it. And it's kind of like right now, like I'm getting a download of information and they're like, just share it now. Um, so, oh, it's a lot. Um, so basically having a muse right have you ever noticed that when you like someone or you're creating something for somebody that you tend to do it better or like you uh, it's hard to explain but it's like when you have that love feeling towards someone or that interest or that curiosity about somebody and you know that they're going to receive or experience your creations then it just it adds this level to your whatever it is that you create. That's why often artists and musicians, they all have their muses, right? And whether that be drugs or a person or whatever oh. it is. So what they just showed me is it's like ping pong. So like when you have a muse and you have that direction of energy like flowing towards somebody, like yeah, of course it can touch mu it can <laughs> touch multiple people, but you have that flow of um, equal energy exchange, right? Because like you're sending a creation out, they're receiving it, you're receiving that positive feeling from them, whether they know it or not. And it's like ping pong, like it goes back and forth and it like builds and builds and builds and builds, right? But you have that direct connection of who you're sending the energy to. But when we're just like, 
oh, I really hope da, 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 da. you're like coming from a place of I don't really believe that it exists because you're not sending it to um, to anything that can reciprocate, right? So this brings me to um, what we're experiencing in the collective right now. It's like what I just heard is like in holy relationships. It's like you have your muse and, and you're also their muse. And so it's like you create something because you're inspired by them. And then they create something because they're inspired by you. And then a whole crap ton of people create something because they're inspired by you both. And then it's just like do, 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 and you're like going higher, higher, higher. Yeah, that's amazing. But okay, so <laughs> this whole twin flame blah 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 I was going to do that was originally gonna be the topic. And I was gonna do um, a live video on my experience with Twin Flames and like where it's led me and like how it started out for me and you know, what I've discovered now. And I got that it's not time to share my personal experience, but I can share this information with you guys. So as we're going higher and higher in our level of consciousness and you know, ascending to Christ consciousness. What we are going to be experiencing, okay, so what I was being shown was throughout the course of our lives, say say we all chosen with very specific roles in the awakening process. And along the way, because the others were not awakened, and not that we always are, but I'm saying like this is a very dense reality and it's been painful. So we've had to like push people away and protect ourselves, right? In order to stay alive. <laughs> and now we're to this like next phase. And the more that we become Christed, the more that we're going to experience each other's pain. And so when we are causing another pain, pain by pushing them away, not giving them resolution because we are afraid of conflict, then we're going to experience things like illness or you know things that just don't seem normal because before when we were pushing people away we were doing it to protect us ourselves but now we're at this new level of consciousness where when we're pushing people away we think that it's to protect ourselves but it's really to avoid conflict and we have to take our power back and 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 see that by avoiding conflict we are creating conflict and it's going to be directly impacted in us because the more we get closer to oneness the more we're going to experience the things that we're doing to one another and so if you're experiencing i know a lot of people are experiencing like heart issues and just different like infections and just weird things that they're not normal there's a lot of people that are getting sick right now and understand that's because we can no longer act from the same level of consciousness that so we've been in an attempt to avoid doing it the hard way it's time for us all to take an inventory of you know how we've coped with this dense reality and how you know going forward are we making our choices from a particular pattern that kept us safe in the past but now is what is causing our pain and if we are, then to make a conscious choice, or do we want to continue those patterns or do we want to step up and try to do something different, even though it's going to be uncomfortable, the, the moment that you take that step forward on a particular path that you've never done before. I mean, change in the moment that you take that step to make a change, it feels scary, it feels unfamiliar because you're projecting from the past what you are perceiving bad will happen in the future but that's not true and you won't see that it's not true until you take that leap forward and go in the direction of change Illusion. and create also um there is so while we're like shifting we're gonna go higher up and things are just gonna like make sense and you know just flow with grace and ease and then the moment that you know, just it's while we're shifting, we're just we're cho we're in the choice point and it's like, are we going to stay here or are we going to ascend? And if you think about, you know, what's coming up for you on dream time. So like keeping a dream journal, writing for the first 11 minutes before you even get out of your bed, writing for the first 11 minutes when you wake up, just write. 
Just write, don't think about it, just write whatever it is that came out in your dream or whatever it is is your first thought, just write, allow yourself to write free. Then as you're going to sleep, write for 11 minutes. And if you wanna do some extra inventory, then in the middle of the day when you're most conscious, your day, when you're most conscious, write again about you know any particular memories that are coming up or anything that you feel that you know just whatever is coming up for you write about what is your most dominant like conscious thought and um you know just allow it to like flow and if you want to you can burn the ones from the middle of the day because that's from your previous um, version of yourself it's from the previous thought patterns and what we are wanting to do is walk consciously. So it's not that Jesus just, he wants me to make this clear. Um, it's not that Jesus just talks to me or just talks to me in the shower. I walk with Jesus. He talks to me throughout the day. I mean, my entire life, he's been the one constant. Oh, I'm getting choked up, but um, yeah. And he's super funny and <laughs> he's, yeah, made this world a lot easier to deal but with. It's not that you know, Jesus just talks to me. I used to think that my um, soul family, my star family was all of the ones that had the guide of Jesus walking here on this earth. And what he's told me just recently is that the reason why I'm like, oh my gosh, Jesus is your primary guide. Oh my gosh, Jesus is your primary guide. It's because he's like, I'm everyone's primary guide. It's just their choice whether they choose to talk to me or not. You know, you can either do this life alone and be like, do do do, I don't know that I'm walking towards a cliff. Ah, oh no, oops, I died. Or you can like talk to Jesus and he can like help you navigate these rough waters of the three dimensional reality. Anyways, um, so yeah, take some exhales. We all need it. But, um, oh, okay, so. Healing the physical, so healing the physical body, listening to our bodies. Um, you know, if weird things are coming up, popping up for you, and you're not normally sick or whatever, you know, what what is this asking you to um, take a look at? Where are you, um, where are you operating from previous versions of consciousness? Where, you know, um, you're not practicing what you preach, so to speak, and um, then also like not pushing people away, uh, learning how to dance with all energies, even discordant energies, and you know, help in whatever way, asking for your guidance, not assuming that you know best. And um, yeah, so now they're wanting me to sh talk about the garden. I don't After my, um, my little trip with my good friend, and we had all of those epiphanies and everything, I was feeling so incredibly clear, like more clear than I've been in a, a very long time and probably the most conscious I've ever been, right, in this incarnation. And as the, I was just feeling this, um, there's familiar presences, so not to put a label on it, but um, there's familiar presences or angels or whatever you want to call it, that walk with us. And some of them are like motherly influences, some of them are fatherly influences, and some of them are like children influences, and some of them are beloved influences, like where you feel that that love of like your ultimate like romantic love, right? And so as I was like taking off, I like felt um, this walking through this this portal or this doorway and like feeling this energy that was so familiar, like I, I like I know this energy, but I don't know if I I I know them like I don't know if they know them physically, like you know, because we're just not awake completely and there's so much in the way. But anyways, um as I went through this doorway, it was like we were just dancing and it's so crazy that all of this stuff happened this week with my mom awakening and, and remembering her part and because I saw us on um, my land but we were like dancing and we were like above the land and there was all of these 
people there and everybody was just so happy and yeah. we were definitely in a different dimension and so I felt like I, I stayed there for a couple of days right and I like danced the other night and I could feel like all the energies of the people that were there and the angels and you know just like all this like good good energy that's um absence of a lot of thought or a lot of um you know wandering and uh then I started to feel like, oh, you know, what am I doing? What, why am I setting myself up for failure? Like, that's never going to happen. So why don't I just focus on what reality is and da 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 da. And that just like, like dropped my vibration like so incredibly that I was like, oh shit, I'm back down here again. <laughs> like what? So like we're going through this portal, guys, and it's important for us to focus on, on um, allowing for us to receive, you know, understanding that by like having that muse or having that um that space where you can go where everything's just lighter and softer and makes more sense. Like it's not that's not you daydreaming or fantasizing. Like that's you tapping into a different dimension of consciousness and that's where we're going as we're ascending. And I think that the more that we can allow ourselves to stay in that space and bring that space to this dimension, the easier that we're going to feel that, that transition. Um, but also understand that if you're waiting for that ascension to happen, but yet you're still experiencing, you know, issues like not wanting to take responsibility or not wanting to deal with conflict or this and this and this in your personal relationships and you think that you're just going to bypass that in order to because you're already you know at the that conscious and you refusing it. to own your own responsibility and like take that step forward and be brave enough to do something different allow people that are holding you back allow them to you know disconnect from you to see that you're not doing them any favors by holding on to them because you think that they need you like you're not doing them any favors actually what's on their other side is expansive and beautiful and by you thinking that you're doing them a favor you're actually inhibiting your both of your ascension and so it's important for us all to look at ourselves and to do our work and know that we're not just gonna get there by waiting for some doorway or whatever ship to show up and take us because we've done enough work. No, it's at the final hour and we still need to and do our work. I'm gonna tell you that what I'm seeing in the light worker community is like, we've gone through this phase of like attracting people that were like our parents or like the whatever part of our childhood that caused us pain and as we have grown in our level of understanding of how everything works on this dimension so we've attracted people that are like the people that caused us pain that we couldn't find resolution with right but now it's like we're keeping those old energies in our lives and it's no longer being a gift for us to have a different experience now it's creating another loop of, of cycles of trauma and unhealthy relationship um, styles of relating to one another. And so it's actually making both parties sick. So, so it's important to see like what is the purpose of our relationships that we have in our lives. Um, to take an inventory of each relationship. Like is it serving you? Is it serving your expansion? Are there is their expansion being served by you is your expansion being served by them or is it holding on to um an old paradigm that once you know maybe was healing but now it's actually holding you back and so it's it's important for us when we're disconnecting from those relationships where we can see that both parties are being you know hindered that we do it in a in a mindful way, a respectful way, a Christed way, where we're not hurting people or pushing people away that could potentially, you know, hurt us. But because we're afraid, we just think, oh, you know, they're disposable. Like, that's not okay. And normally the 
people that come into your life that trigger you or make you feel something that you feel like you don't have control over, you know, normally there is the most growth in those relationships. And, you know, depending on what that pull is and whether it be that they trigger the crap out of you or you just feel so drawn to them that you just need to get them away from you because you think you're going to be distracted or whatever. Um, whatever the case may be, it's good for us to look at that. And if they're triggering you negatively, then, you know, what what is what is that trigger coming up to teach you? And understand that it's not the person that's doing it to you. They're activating something that is ready to be healed within you. And understand that they didn't create the wounding that you're feeling. They're just tapping on a wound that already exists. And it's crazy, like, while we're talking about this and I'm talking about us all being one, I can, like, feel somebody that i'm connected to like having skin issues and i'm like yeah what's happening but it's because i'm talking about this subject and so it's reminding me and in how incredibly connected you know we all are and um that we're all in this together and the more and more that we take responsibility for one another by um you know helping each other see what we might not be able to see and and also like being one another's cheerleaders and also not trying to like be so in your face if you feel like somebody's making a mistake understand that everybody has free will and all you can do is offer a hand but it's their choice whether or not they take that hand or they push you away for us and not to take it personally because you know um we're still at a level of consciousness within the human collective where yes we learn through love but we're still kind of pre premature immature in love um like our level of, okay so yeah we're kind of still dumb in love like we're not grounded when we're in that higher level of love so it's um yeah even just tapping into that i forgot what i was gonna say um, so, yeah, completely lost it. Yeah, I'll let you Like, know. basically, we think that bad things are good things, and healthy things are unhealthy, and love is something to be afraid of, or whatever, like, that anything that is of God and light and love could ever be something that was bad or distracting, like, that's just not right but we're still you know babies when it comes to knowing how to have that that heavenly um unconditionality for someone without all of our our vices and our patterns and our programs and our dysfunctions right like everyone has some level of dysfunction we've all been raised with some level of dysfunction and it's about us acknowledging our levels of dysfunction and working on clearing our patterns and getting to a state of wholeness within ourselves even when we're able to teach it it's there's no one that's walking on the planet that's doing it perfectly you know so i um i feel like while we're still at this place where our most expansion comes from pain that in order to push us through this um, level of ascension and know that we all have a choice right now so you can be like the healthiest person alive but if when you're up at your choice point and you decide mm, I'd rather not expand you're just gonna die like some it's just it is what it is it's nothing to be afraid of but it's a global choice point like you can't stay here if you don't raise your vibration because you won't be a frequency match to this planet so it just is what it is right so if you've been at like the highest level of consciousness on this planet and now you're being asked to ascend it's higher so comfortable and it's going to feel like you shouldn't have to do it and this and this and this, but it's always the easy way or the hard way, right? So I think I will come back tomorrow and give you guys the information about Twin Flames and maybe share a little bit of my personal experience with you guys. Um, but ultimately, I wanted to tell you that it is okay to have a muse and it is okay to create. 
And even if that muse doesn't know that you're creating things for them, you can still use <laughs> them um, in a good way, in a healthy way to inspire you to expand. And this muse could be anyone from a celebrity to a lover or whatever, a child. Um, I find that I am easily a muse. <laughs> I find muses everywhere in like literally every experience I have. So that's a beautiful So I just wanted to let you guys know that I am available for readings and healing one-on-one -on -one sessions and also, any of my courses are still available, the previously recorded courses, and next year we'll start with the live sessions again with the groups. So if you guys want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, um, let me know. You can send me an email or you can visit my website at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com and my email is info at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. Okay.